What will a landslide Labour victory at the general election mean for you as a property investor and what can you actually do about it? In this video, I'm going to share with you six practical actions you can start to take right now to prepare for an incoming Labour government. So if you're new to this channel, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We put out new videos each and every week and they're all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. Now, in life, there's a whole bunch of stuff that you can't control. You can't do anything about. The direction of travel is that the Tories are pretty much clapped out. People want to change. And I don't think that's going to change between now and the general election. I think the polls are correct. The recent YouGov uh, poll predicts a 1997-style wipeout for the Tories and no matter what Rishi Sunak is saying and trying to deny the polls are right and all this sort of stuff, it's probably going to go that way. So let's take it as a given. The Tories are out. Labour are going to be in. What will it mean for you as a property investor? And given that's a given, what steps or what actions can you start to take right now to prepare so that you continue to profit under a Labour regime? Now, some things I'm saying in this video might be a bit controversial, so listen up and tell me what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear and make sure you smash that like button. It means more people get to hear and see these videos. Now, let's start with what we know. We do know that the general election is likely to be in the latter half of 2024, according to everything that Rishi Sunak and government ministers have been saying. Now, I think that's good news because in January, of course, the government has said they're going to issue some consultation papers on rushing through some new permitted development rights. Now, it is very likely that these new permitted development rights will be coming into force round about March of 2024. Now, what are they proposing? They're proposing to introduce a brand new permitted development right, which will allow any house to be converted into two dwellings, two flats, under permitted development, provided the external envelope doesn't change. Now that, of course, will give plenty of options for small-scale developers up and down the country. As well as that, there's a consultation paper on extending the existing permitted development rights on converting commercial buildings to uh, residential use. Again, there'll be more types of buildings that will fit this template. A lot of the limits and restrictions on the existing rights will be removed. And quite crucially, there are strong rumours that the existing requirement for a defunct commercial building to be vacant for three months before you can apply for change of use, that requirement will be removed. So what am I saying here is that these PD rights are likely to come into force before any general election. So that means there'll be opportunity to profit from exploiting those PD rights for a good few years ahead. Now, an incoming Labour administration will have plenty of bigger fish to fry than repealing existing PD rights. And I don't think that will happen anytime soon. I think they'll be concentrating on other things on the agenda and not existing PD rights. But here's the thing. I don't think a Labour government will be introducing more PD rights along the lines that we have seen under the Tory administration. And here's why. Labour housing policy tends to be towards providing social housing, whereas the permitted development rights we've seen over the last decade have been geared around making one and two bedroom flats, which actually is good housing stock for the private rented sector and first time buyers. And of course, once you have secured permitted development on a site, you have three years to implement that permission. Now, it's never happened, and I believe unlikely to ever happen, that once you have been given a permitted development approval by a local authority, that any government will say, well, OK, we're taking them away. What they may do is close the door on the PD rights on new people uh, gaining them, but they are not going to take away what has already been granted. That's never happened before. But even though there is a possibility that some of these PD rules could be repealed, I honestly cannot envisage a Labour government having that anywhere near their top priority list for at least the first year in government. 
So my action point for you right now is to uh, follow this channel first of all because we'll be keeping you up to date with these new PD rights as they go through the consultation process and we'll be telling you what is implemented and when they come into force. And then start looking for sites and property deals where you can exploit these permitted development rights, get your permissions in and have some fun with it. Now tell me what you think about what I've said in the P about PD rights in the comments below. I'd love to hear your comments and questions. Now the second thing I'd like to talk about is basically follow the money. I mean in any business, you know, you've got to stay ahead and you stay ahead by following the money. Now where is the money going to be in a Labour administration? It is going to be less towards uh, owner-occupier housing, it's going to be less towards uh, private rental sector, but more towards social housing. Now there are lots of strategies for profiting from social housing, either developing those uh, accommodations and also renting social housing directly to housing associations, assisted care kind of schemes and also back to local authorities. So anything you want to get involved with which has social housing as an exit route should be safe and should prosper under a Labour regime. Now the third thing you can expect from a Labour government is rent control. The grassroots of Labour seem adamant to bring this in one way or the other. Now we all know that everywhere in the world where rent controls have been tried, it's actually failed. It's actually meant less housing stock for people and it's meant a deterioration in the quality of the housing stock and it's actually had the opposite effect to the one that was intended. Now I did a whole video on rent controls and why it doesn't work and you can click on that and watch that later on. Now the thing is, I don't expect this Labour administration to be as loopy and as socialist and as uh, almost near communist as what Jeremy Corbyn was proposing. So there's a big difference between rent controls, as Jeremy Corbyn was proposing, and rent capping, which I think is going to be the likely uh, route for an incoming Labour administration. So what they're likely to do is cap the annual increases that a landlord can make to rent. So here's the problem. If you're one of these landlords who haven't increased your rents in the last three or four years because your existing tenant is, well, you know, um, paying up every month is a generally good guy and all the rest of it. Then when your next tenancy comes up, you could have problems in increasing that rent by say 30% to bring it up to market levels. So I think what they will do is have annual caps at the amount that a landlord can increase rents by. And these might be set at inflation rates or something like that. So here's the thing that you must do before the general election. If your tenant has been in situ for a year, you need to start in, uh, issuing Section 13 notices to raise the rent up to market levels. You need to be charging market rent today so that if you are capped from increasing your rents to inflation or whatever, then you're never out of step. If your rents are, say, 30% under market rent, and then you have rent capping, which limits your rent rises to 5% per year, then you're pretty much stuffed. And that will affect you big time because when you're looking to remortgage your property or refinance your property, if your rents aren't at market levels, then it will affect the amount that you're able to borrow. Now the Conservatives have got this renters reform bill thing and one of the things that proposes is to abolish section 21 notices. Section 21 notices basically allow landlords to call time on a tenancy after a six month duration without any fault of the tenant. Now this really is necessary because if a landlord is looking to sell a property or perhaps needs to move into the property for their own occupation, you need the right to be able to say, well after a fixed period of time, here's two months notice, I need the property back. So I believe that under a Labour regime there ain't going to be much changes to the Renters Reform Bill and the abolition of Section 21 notices. One thing that the Conservatives were promising though is that before abolishing Section 21 notices they would actually make sure that the court system is beefed up so that if a landlord needs to gain the property back because there's been some breach in the tenancy agreement, they can do so under an efficient court process. 
Now, I'm not sure whether this will be at the forefront of Labour's agenda. We'll have to wait and see. But what I see is that savvy landlords will either have to polarise what section of the market that they're aiming for. Either you, you're, you are focusing on social housing tenants, where your rent is paid largely from housing benefit payments, or you are focused at the upper end, you know, people with good incomes, good jobs, and all the rest of it. Basically, people who would be concerned about their credit rating, who one day aspire to buying their own property and don't really want to have a bad credit score or bad rent payment history on their file. What I think will be a problem is uh, the private rented sector where people are not on um, uh, social housing but they're not super high earners, they're somehow in the middle, maybe in the gig economy, gig economy and the like. You know, those sort of people may find it more difficult to get tenancies unless Labour make sure that landlords have a surefire way of getting their property back if the tenancy doesn't go to plan. Now here's another thing you see round about election time and that's election inertia. At election time people freeze. People don't seem to want to do anything. They want to wait and see what happens. But guess what? If you're a bit long in the tooth, you'll know that not really that much happens from election to election. There's a bit of a hoo-ha in the media and then it's business as usual. There will be a few changes here and there, but there will be a change, changes that affect us all. And it's, all, it's the same sun that shines on all our backs. So we're all on a level playing field and there's always a way to find opportunity uh, no matter what's going on. Now, the interesting aspect of general elections is the owner-occupier market and market activity among owner-occupiers accounts for 90% of all housing transactions in the UK. Now, for an owner-occupier, your house, your own home, is often the largest transaction, largest financial transaction anyone will make in their lifetime. And people have that uncertainty around, around elections and people tend to delay buying until after a general election. Now that's of course an opportunity for you as a savvy investor to find bargains. If the market is slowing down, if owner occupiers aren't buying but a seller needs to sell because they're motivated, then you can sweep in as an investor and bag yourself a bargain. So remember, election inertia might affect owner-occupiers, but it shouldn't affect you. You need to carry on and take advantage of a buyer's market, which means a buyer's opportunity. So let me know what you think about what I've been saying. Leave your comments below. Got any questions? Also ask them in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Interest rates. Well, uh, swap rates and all of that have come down significantly. Inflation has come down and uh, everyone's expecting the Bank of England to reduce rates. And I think that will happen. But what will happen after a Labour election victory? Well, this is a little bit of speculation, but I think Labour will come in thinking they want to do this and that and all things under the sun. They will be persuaded by their grassroots to bring in all sorts of policies. But I think they will also have an eye on the quasi Quatang and Liz Truss fiasco of a budget that happened um, not so long ago. Now that was a valuable lesson because if you do something where you haven't got an eye on the public finances and you do something that's a little bit reckless uh, with the economy, then the markets will punish you. They'll punish the value of the pound, which also will have a damaging effect on interest rates. Now with Liz Don't Trust <laughs> and Kamikwazai Kwarteng, their uh, misdemeanor was to basically promise too many tax cuts. And these tax cuts were largely unfunded, which blew a hole in the public finances. The markets lost confidence in UK PLC. There was a run on the pound that had to be stabilised by aggressively putting up rates. Now, with an incoming Labour administration, it's the other thing that they will do. It'll be spending too much money, which will create a black hole in the public finances. And again, that will have the same effect as the quasi quatang ill-fated budget. So I think when they get in, they won't be as mad with their spending commitments as their grassroots may be expecting them to be. 
So I'm going to stick my neck out and say that in the first year of a Labour administration, I don't see that much change in the trajectory of interest rates uh, in terms of them going down. Uh, and that seems to be the direction of travel right now. But I wouldn't be surprised if an incoming Labour government increased the top rates of tax bans, both personal taxes, and I don't see them dropping current rates of corporation tax. But I don't know how far they will be able to go with that, all of that, because we're in a different world now from uh, 1997 or the 1970s or whenever uh, Labour have uh, got in before, and that's because uh, the workforce and people are far more mobile in this global world and if those tax rates are pushed too high and too out of sync, people will simply vote with their feet. Now I've said a lot of what I think, my personal views and my personal views about what actions you should be taking in advance of Labour coming into power. Tell me what you think in the comments below. If you think I'm completely wrong and, the, and Rishi Sunak is going to win the general election, also tell me why in the comments below. That's it for this video. Subscribe, hit the bell icon so you're notified when we upload new videos. See you guys next time. The Baker Street Property Meet is the UK's largest and number one property investors networking event. The property market is going through monumental change right now and at Baker Street Property Meet we aim to keep you up to date with the latest tips and tricks and insider tactics to help you keep on top of your property investing game and succeed in these troubled economic times. The Baker Street Property Meet is fundamentally about networking because it's not what you know, it's who you know. And at Baker Street, we aim to connect you with the people to make your property journey a monumental success. There's no better place to be to further your property investment journey than the Baker Street Property Meet. So make sure you're here, you're connecting with myself and Andrew Roberts, our expert guest speakers and 300 passionate property people each and every month. See you at the next meet. Get your spot at bakerstreetpropertymeet.com.